This is the problem with thrift shops. I just get distracted by all of the records. Okay, so I was recently asked to host a thrift flip challenge alongside my friend Charlotte from at Charlotte's house for the builders challenge on Instagram. And I love thrift flips. That's how I got started in DIY. So anytime someone's like, wanna do a thrift flip, I'm like, heck yeah. Here's the thing. Charlotte has already found her piece for this thrift flip and I have not. Um, I just had to drive to the North Shore of Long Island um, and I don't always explore up here, but there is a thrift shop that I just found uh, along the way and I'm going to go in there and see if they have any furniture. So wish me luck. Okay, so there is some furniture here. Nothing that catches my eye right away, but these prices are dope. Like $6 for a table. So we're just gonna, we're gonna look. Okay, now this is something I can get behind. It's like a little bar cart. I think the proportions are a little off. I'd love to do something decorative with the doors, put some metal accents on it, but this is, this is an option. And for $19, this could be a winner. Let's think about it. This is the problem with thrift shops. I just get distracted by all of the records. Stay focused. Here's the thing, I'm back outside. I can't stop stalking this. So I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Okay, I see the potential in this piece. So that's the one, let's get it home. All right, friends, so in full disclosure, if you follow me on Instagram, then this project will look familiar because I did share it a couple of months ago as my entry for the furniture flip challenge that is hosted by the Builders Challenge. But if you're not sure what I'm referring to, I will leave a couple of links below this video to the Builders Challenge blog that has all of the details about their furniture flip challenge. They host this a couple times a year. I'm going to be doing this again at some point soon. It was so much fun. And I'll also leave links to my Instagram below so you can check that out as well. In the meantime though, I thought it would be super fun to share this project in full this week, especially since I've been so busy with the retail store build out as well as the new house and I wanted to post something instead of skipping another weekend. So here we go. Now, first step in this project was deconstructing this cabinet once it got into my workshop. I legit thought I was gonna have to cut this thing off. It comes right off. Well, that could not have been easier. Sick. I wish every project was that easy. Honestly, I was so happy that top came off so easy because the first thing I wanted to do when I saw this piece was replace it with a butcher block top. So I <laughs> took that top right on off and then trimmed down the back of the cabinet using my table saw, put that back in place, and then it was time to focus on some other areas of this project. In true Sam fashion, I didn't press record. I completely was on autopilot when I did this on both of the doors, but basically both these doors had knobs like this. This one obviously was not as clean of a separation as this one was, but they were attached with dowels. So I took a hammer and knocked it out pretty aggressively. I'm not gonna lie. But now that these are out, I'm gonna fill this hole with some wood putty and let it dry and then eventually sand it down. And I have new hardware for these. So it's gonna look dope. So I'm gonna put some wood putty in here and then I'm gonna move on to the next step on this door, which is cutting out this panel. I feel like the next part of this project is gonna be unsurprising for those of you that know me, but I'm very much into this like cozy industrial vibe. And when I first saw these cabinets, I really wanted to replace these center inserts with some metal meshing. And that is exactly what I did. So I used my jigsaw to cut out the center panels of these cabinets. I tried to make the lines as clean as possible, but I didn't stress about it because as you will see in a little bit, I did use a router with a flush trim bit to make sure that these cuts were beautiful. Okay, so I just used my flush trim bit to route out this cabinet. Look how nice that looks now, actually. So as you can see though, this cabinet door is not entirely made out of real wood. It has a composite on it. So what I'm gonna do is, well, backtrack. This is the bottom side of the door. This is the top side. So they put a veneer on the top side of the door and then they basically nailed, which 
pretty cool, pretty cool idea. Basically nailed some real wood boards to the outside. So I'm gonna go in here with wood filler and just fill all of this. And then eventually I'm gonna like spice up this cabinet's life for all my 90s friends out there. And once that putty dries, I'm gonna sand everything down and I'm gonna route out a groove in the back of the cabinet door to pop in some decorative panel. And since this is a thrift flip challenge thing, I decided I'm gonna upcycle like an old door screen for that. Um, we're not old, it's in good condition. A door screen for that. I'm gonna go wood putty my life away on this while probably singing Spice Girls. And then I will sand it down tomorrow. And yeah, sounds about right. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that sanding is basically my least favorite thing in the entire world, but I just got a new sanding system that automatically hooks up to a dust collector, and I've never been so excited about sanding in my entire life, so let's sand this cabinet door. Ah! So I knew from the second I saw this piece that I wanted to paint it in a flat black color and add a natural top to it. So I made sure to spend a decent amount of time sanding all of the pieces of this cabinet super flat. And yes, seriously, my new sander made that way more enjoyable experience than it's ever been in my entire life. So thank you, Mirka. But once those doors were sanded, I then went back in with my router to create grooves on the inside of the door to place those metal grates that I spoke about earlier because I wanted that metal looking look thing look. How many times did I just say look at that sentence? You get what I mean. Luckily, I'm really good at dumpster diving and I found this leftover metal screen thing for a door and it was the perfect size that I needed for this piece and I spent literally zero dollars on it, which Honestly, it just felt so appropriate for a thrift flip slash furniture flip challenge, am I right? So after cutting that metal mesh using some tin snips, I then install them into those grooves that I made with my router using a stapler. At this point though, once those screens were added, everything was sanded and ready to be primed. Not gonna lie, at this point, I was feeling like things were going pretty smooth. I was super happy with the progress. And then of course I jinxed myself because I totally screwed up. So I just tried to like carry the cabinet outside to prime. And because there's no top, there's like nothing holding it all together and it just fell apart into pieces. So I guess I'm gonna have to <laughs> paint this thing in pieces. Don't worry friends, if you thought that was bad, it gets better. I thought I was gonna be able to salvage this hardware, but I literally just tried to like unscrew this from the cabinet. It's just like cracking and falling apart. I guess in a way it's a blessing in disguise because now I can put hardware in there that won't deteriorate on me, but it definitely makes for more work and that bums me out a bit, but oh well. Prime these pieces and I'll deal with that tomorrow. My dad is laughing at me. Hey, hey. That's what happens when you buy rotted screws in it's, wood. It's not my fault. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, it's not funny. So after kicking my heckling dad out of my workstation and getting all of that rotted hardware out, I then spent some time priming the rest of the cabinet. And lucky for me, I did have a couple of different cans of primer hanging around my shop. So I used those for this project. They didn't match, but that was okay. Oh, friends, check me out. In the spirit of thrift flipping, I went to Home Depot to look for this color. This color is called limousine leather. I went to Home Depot to look for limousine leather. And while I was there, I was like, you know what? Let me just look in their throwback section where people return colors that they don't want to see what they have. And you'll never believe it. They had limousine leather right there in the throwback section for $9. Yeah, so I got this whole gallon of paint for nine bucks. That's a win in my book. Let's paint this thing. 
I really wanted to try out my new Wagner sprayer for this project and it did not disappoint. I was able to paint this entire cabinet in maybe 10 minutes tops and it left such a beautiful finish. I could not have been happier with the way this thing turned out. Then in my true multitasking ways, I allowed the cabinet to dry outside while I then moved inside to work on the butcher block looking top. And butcher block can be super expensive. So instead of buying that, I opted for some cheaper stair treads, which are basically just laminated pieces of pine. I then cut them down to the length that I needed and then eventually glued up two pieces in order to get the depth that I needed for the counter. I then left that overnight to dry as well and came back the next day to add the finishing touches to this cabinet. So in terms of some finishing touches, the first thing I did was replace all of those caster wheels on the bottom of the cabinet. The old ones were really broken, so I decided to go with some black industrial looking ones instead. And I also decided to recycle those original hinges that I placed in that Ziploc bag and then attached the cabinets, fit them as they needed, and then touched them up with a little bit of paint once they fit perfectly. At this point, the top of the cabinet was also dried, so I decided to remove it from the clamps, sand it down nice and flat, and then stain it in a really pretty golden oak color. But I will link everything I use for this project down below in the video description. And once that top was done, I then attached it to the counter itself using some L brackets from underneath. I also made sure to seal it using one of my favorite products in the entire world, some walrus oil wood finish. Last step was to add some brand new sleek black modern cabinet poles and we have ourselves a thrift flip. As much as I have a total passion for building furniture from scratch, there is something so special about taking a piece that already exists and then transforming it into something that feels brand new. I hope you all enjoyed this thrift flip as much as I did, just something gentle for the channel this week as I continue to organize my life at home and in the shop. I cannot wait to share everything that I have in store for all of you, but in the meantime, please make sure to subscribe to my channel, click that thumbs up if you like this video, and as always, thank you so much for watching, for supporting what I do. I will see you very soon with a new project, but until then friends, happy DIYing.